Hey Nathan here, welcome back to another tutorial for Mono Game. Last tutorial we discussed the basics on how to draw a sprite to the screen. There's obviously more complex ways to do that, but that was just the basics. In this video we're going to discuss how to move that sprite on the screen. And again, this is just going to be the very basics. We're going to have a new series after this. And the next episode, we're going to cover the more advanced topics. So this is the exact same file that we finished in the last video. I just created a new project and added the code from the last project and things like that. So this is the last tutorial. We're going to extend on this by using the keyboard and we're going to move our sprite using the arrow keys. So in order to do that, we need to get the we need to capture the state of the keyboard whenever we update our game. Every update call, we need to capture the state of the keyboard so we know what buttons are pressed and what buttons are not. So let's go ahead and create a field for keyboard state. And let's call this uh, just key state. All right. In our initialize method, we haven't used this yet, so let's go ahead and use that. Let's do uh, key state is equal to keyboard dot get state. So we're going to get the keyboard state right at the beginning, and then in the update method, we're going to get the keyboard state again. Uh, let's do this at the very beginning, right before the if block. Key state is equal to keyboard dot get state. The reason we're doing this at the very beginning is because you see this keyboard dot get state here. We don't need to do that anymore. We just replace that with the key state. We don't need to make two calls to keyboard dot get state. And as you see here, this tells us how to test for keyboard input. You know, if I press F5 and run, if I hit the escape key the game quits. So we already know how to test keyboard input. Alright, so that is the getting the keyboard state and so every update call it's going to retrieve the keyboard and update the key state. Now we need to have a vector 2 for position and velocity. Velocity we're going to set at zero zero So vector velocity is equal to vector two dot zero and position we're going to set that as uh, new vector two one hundred comma two hundred and also just a quick tip, we're going to change the graphics dimension in this video as well. So I want this game to be 1280 by 720. I want it to be uh, HD resolution. So in the game one constructor, right after graphics is equal to new graphics device manager. So after the graphics is initialized, let's go to graphics dot preferred back buffer width is equal to 1280. Graphics that preferred back buffer height is equal to 720. So we're changing that to 1280 by 720. If we build and run, you'll see that our game is now 1280 by 720. Okay. So our velocity is zero and our position is vector 2, 100 comma 200. Now, let's make one more field for float speed is equal to, uh, let's set our speed to about 80. So our speed is 80, our velocity is 0, and our position is 100, 200. Now, the reason we're doing this is because the appropriate way to update your 
sprites is to use the elapsed time. You know, use time. You don't want to update based on pixel amount. And you might notice some games do this. If you have high, very high frame rate, all of a sudden all the objects move incredibly fast. You don't want to do that. You want to use the elapsed time. That way objects move at a constant rate. If you have 500 frames per second or if you have 60 frames per second, the objects will still move at the same rate because the times, you that's you being used in the formula. So if we move up, we want the velocity to be in a negative y direction. Uh, let me bring this up for a minute here. I think they took that out, actually. No, here it is. Alright, I'm just getting the screen draw here going. Alright, so our game window looks like this. In mathematics, we have a coordinate system like that. That's positive x, positive y. So this is a, this point here is a positive x and positive y. In direct x and in most game coordinate systems, this is positive y and this is positive x. So if we move up, we're moving up in the negative. So this is positive y. This is positive x. So when we move up, we are moving up in a negative y fashion. When we move right, we are moving positive x. When we move down, it's positive y. When we're moving left, it's negative x. All right, so when we move up, it's moving up in negative y. So let's go ahead and test for our keyboard inputs. Up, down, left, right. That's all we're doing in this video. So if key state dot is key down, keys dot up, the up arrow key. So if we move up, we want our angle to be negative 90 or 270, whichever one you prefer. So to do this, let me write down a formula here. Uh, position x is equal to, that is going to be cosine angle times speed. And then position y is equal to sine angle times speed. Now you know why we created the speed field here. So this is the mathematical way to get from both angle and speed to a vector. We have position x and position y. So we need to get cosine and sine. So we need to get the angle and we're going to use radians here. Angle in, or angle in radians. Angle in radians. Okay. Don't worry if you're confused about this. I'm going to have a math series going on for game developers. You know, th things like this. I'm not going to have a, you know, I'm, not, I'm a math minor, so I'm not going to go into calculus level stuff. But there's some mathematical stuff that you need to know as a game developer. Stuff like this. I have the angle that I want to move, and I have the speed that I want to move. I need to get a vector. So how do I do that? That kind of mathematical stuff, and some physics stuff as well, will need to come in play. So that series will be math for game developers.
I will not go into calc. It's not going to be a math for mathematical minors or mathematical majors. It's going to be math for game developers. Okay, so if we move up, we need to know. We need to get our vector. We need to get our velocity vector from that. Okay, so if we if we move up, it's going to be a negative y. We can either do it a negative degrees, a negative angle, or a negative or I'm sorry, a positive angle. So here we go again with the screen drawing. This is positive y, positive x. This is, we're using the radians here. So quick, very quick math overview. This is pi. And this is both 0 and 2 pi. So that going to the right is a 0 angle or a 2 pi angle. Going to the left is a, ang is a pi angle. So as you can imagine, this is pi over 2. It's half of that. So this is 3 pi over 2. Or, as I said, if we move up, we're looking at the up here. Uh, if we move up, that's also negative pi over 2. So depending on what you want to do, I like to do it all positives. So I'm going to do 3 pi over 2. So that's the angle in radians. So our velocity is equal to new vector 2 So now we're working on the x component. So that's going to be math.cosine. I need to import system.math. So at the very top, at uh, using system here. So math.cosine. Now we need to pass in our angle. And we're using radians is because you can see here, d colon, an angle measured in radians. So that is why we are using radians in our code. So we need to do 3.0f times math helper dot pi over 2. Now it's going to complain about this. Argument type double is not assignable to a parameter type float. So that means that this cosine here is providing a float, or it's providing a double which we need to change it to a float. There we go, now it's happy. So that is the angle. 3 pi over 2. And I'm actually going to use resharper here. So I'm going to do the resharper command, and I'm going to introduce a, a variable here for float angle here. That way I don't have to type that as well. So just create a variable here for the angle. So that is the cosine. Now we're going to times speed. All right, so now we need to do the y component. And we're moving up, so it needs to be a negative. And we get that by doing the formula here, math.sine. And then angle in radians. So we just we created the variable there. So angle, and we need to cast that as a float, times speed. So that is our velocity. Now, you might think, well, if we do this, if key state that is key down, keys dot down. All right, so if we do the same thing, but change the angle here to pi over 2, you know, this is exactly the same as that. And you're right, we can simplify this. 
So we can move the float angle out of this. So float angle is equal to zero. And then get rid of the word float in here and get rid of the word float in here and then get rid of both of these velocities. Now I'm gonna cut the last one. I'm gonna paste it after the F. So that's what we can do to simplify these things. Uh, in your game project, you will wanna keep aware of that. Uh, code repetition is a dangerous thing. You know, if we ever wanted to change the way that the velocity works, we'd have to change it in all those key state, all these blocks here. But since we change that to only do it once, if we ever want to change the way that the velocity works, all we have to do is change it once. Now, obviously, some code repetition is, you cannot avoid it, but if you can, you want to do that. So by default, our angle is zero. So really, all we need to do is test to see if anything's different. Like we mentioned before, this is zero, this is pi over two, this is pi, this is three pi over two. So anything that's different needs to be tested. So we test it up, down, left. So we need to test left now. If key state dot is key down keys dot left angle is equal to math helper dot pi. All right, so that is the that's setting the angle. Our speed doesn't change depending on wh what button we're pressing, only the angle. So keep that in mind. What's changing you want to do in the blocks of the if conditions. Now velocity, that's going to change depending on our button presses, but the only component that's going to change is the angle. Our speed's going to stay the same. So we can do that out of every block. Now, what if we're not pressing the left? What if we're not pressing anything? Our velocity is still going to be updated. We do not want that to happen. So, so there's a couple ways we can do this, depending on how you want it to work. You can either group all these together into a Boolean and if you press any of the keys, that means you can move. You are moving. And then just do that. If you are moving, update the velocity to this. If you're not moving, update the velocity to zero. Or you can use the nullable type here, like float question mark. And then we can set that to null. We can do that too. So if we have a null angle, that means we cannot move. So what we need to do here is if key state dot is key down keys dot right. So I'm going to show you the null approach here. So we have all of our angles set. So if we do not press anything, that means angle will be null. So now if angle dot has value or you can test if it's null but if it has value that means we can update our velocity here so angle dot value here and angle dot value here else velocity is equal to vector two dot zero Okay, so this approach, depending on how you might want to work it, 
you can make all these separate variables and have a boolean to see if you are moving. So if you are moving, update the velocity. Otherwise, set it to zero. Or you can use a nullable type like this. And if the angle has a value, you'll update the velocity. Otherwise, set it to zero. And there's all sorts of ways you can do this. If you want to, you can update the velocity in each one of these if you want. Or you can make a update velocity um, method here. You're still changing it only once. You're still changing it only once, and then you provide the angle and the speed if you want. So you can do it that way too. Multiple ways you can do this. Okay. So now that we have our velocity, let's update our position. And this is where the time comes in. So the formula is position is equal to position plus velocity times time. <clears throat> so we need to update our position by multiplying velocity times time. So position is equal to vector two dot add position and then vector two dot multiply velocity comma game time dot elapsed game time dot total seconds. That is a double, so I had to cast it as a float. So let me explain what this is doing really quick. We have position is equal to vector 2 dot add opening parentheses, position, comma, vector 2 dot multiply, opening parentheses, velocity, comma, casting as a float, game time dot elapsed, game time dot total seconds. So what this is doing, let me bring up the colors here, let's go with cyan. So vector2.add, so add, we are adding two separate vectors together. We are adding position and we are adding the multiplication of velocity times time. So position plus velocity times time. That's what we're doing on that. So let me bring up a different color for let's say red. So vector 2 dot multiply. Here we are multiplying velocity times time. Velocity times the elapsed time. So we are adding position plus the multiplication of velocity times time. So vector 2 to add is we are adding two different vectors together. But remember, we need to add time into this equation. So we multiply the velocity times the elapsed time. If you ever get confused, position is in basic units. Position is pixels. Velocity is pixel over seconds or any time value you want to use. Acceleration is pixels over seconds squared, or any time units you want to use. So as you might imagine, 
to update velocity, we need to multiply acceleration times time. And then update position, we multiply velocity times time. It gets rid of these units. So seconds times seconds gets rid of these units. So that gives us position. So that is that line there. We are adding two different vectors together by using the vector 2.add. Just like this, we're adding two different vectors together. Velocity times time results in a new vector. So position plus that new vector. So how do we get that new vector? We need to use the vector 2.multiply, which lets us multiply a vector by a scalar value. Any static number, you know, 3.5, 6, 9, 20, 35, any value like that is a scalar. And you'll see the multiply there. Vector 2, value 1, comma, float, scale, val scale factor. So we're just multiplying a vector by a single float value. And that will change both the x and the y components of that vector. All right, so in our draw call here, let's change our new vector to 100, 200 to position. Now if we press F5, we are not moving up. We are moving negative y. Down, we're moving positive y. Right or left, we're moving negative. Left, right, we're moving positive x. Not pressing anything, we're not moving. All right, so that is it for this video. A little bit longer than I wanted to for it to be, but I did mention there are multiple ways you can use to change the velocity. <clears throat> if you don't like the uh, nullable type approach, you can use the method approach, which would still provide the velocity change as a single line of code in a single place. So if you ever want to change how the velocity changes, uh, you can still do that, update that only once. So if you want to do that route, you just have to have a method call in each one of these. And like I said, some repetition might be required. You cannot avoid it. And repetition of a method call, you know, that's that's okay. So we can have like an update velocity call here. And then you'll just call that method in multiple places. You could do that. Oops. And then if you never, if you didn't press anything, you know, it wouldn't update. So if you do it, if you do it this way, be sure to set the velocity to set it to zero initially, and then update the velocity depending on if you press anything. So you can do it that route, or you can do it the other way that I mentioned is to have each one of these a uh, a boolean value. So if I do this, uh, introduce variable here, boolean, uh, move, moving up, do this, boolean, moving down, introduce variable here, Moving left, introduce variable here, moving right. So you can do it that way too, and then you can see if you're if you are moving up or down or left or right, then you can update the velocity. Otherwise, set it to zero. So there's multiple ways you can do this. For the easiest approach without creating another method and creating more method calls, it's easier just to create a nullable type for the angle. And then if the angle is null, you can just do it that way. So I'm going to undo all my changes here.
Okay. So now, move up is going to be negative y. Move down, positive y. Move left, negative x. Move right, positive x. If I move in multiple directions, the last if takes priority. So if you want to change the way that works, like I'm moving up and then right. Right is a last if condition, so that takes priority. So you can change that too. If you press up or down, you know, you might want to do zero. So you can change it around, just play around with it, see what you can come up with. Uh, other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's about twice as long as I wanted it to be, but... Uh, hopefully you got a good understanding on what you can do and multiple ways that you can approach this kind of situation where if you don't press anything, you don't want to move, so... Uh, don't worry, I'll get into a math series for game developers to discuss topics just like this. So if you're confused about that, don't worry, we'll get into that later. Uh, but this is how you update the velocity if you have both the angle and the speed. And that's that. So I hope to see you next time where we will discuss displaying text.